Is it recording? Okay. Uh, what's the deal, everybody? It's the Border McLean at Dwayne McLean TV. Back again with another video. We got to shout out the DMTV supporters. Thank you to everybody helping me get this channel to 5,000 subscribers. Like I said, when we get to 5,000 subs, I will have the baby chains back. I also put some ideas or some pendants y'all want to see, man. Like I said, I might, I might get that four-leaf clover, man. I might get a little leprechaun or something. I've been shopping for some some real nice ones. You know what I'm saying? We'll get a whole new link and a new whole new band, everything. It's going to be nice, man. You know what I'm saying? And also, if you want to support the channel, like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. If you want to show more support, hit the Cash App, hit the PayPal, subscribe to my Patreon, or buy the DMTV merch. All links will be in the description box, all right? So, random question of the day. Who will win in a street brawl? Family Dollar or Dollar General? I got Family Dollar smoking Dollar General like out the gate because I have been to a lot of hoods and I do see Dollar General in the hood, but I don't see Dollar General in the hood hood. Like it be at the hood where there's still a little bit of nice little neighborhood still there. But in the hood hood, the slum slums, I see nothing but Family Dollars there. And Dollar Tree don't count. Dollar Tree like the suburb Dollar Store. He be hanging out with Walmart and stuff. He like the white boy hood. You know what I'm saying, you know, but who do y'all got winning? Dollar General or Family Dollar in an all-out street ball? <laughs> I said brawl, all-out street brawl. So today's video is going to be about how hip-hop is some of the most toxic, most evil, most vile, disgusting, low vibration, low frequency stuff you can put inside your head. Don't get it twisted. I'm probably one of the biggest hip-hop heads in the world. I love hip-hop music. But for me listening to it for so long, it wasn't until I branched out to other genres and realized how negative this stuff is. There's a country song called Drunk Girl. I don't know who is it, who is it by. I should have looked that up before I started recording. But y'all know how I do. Y'all look that up. All right, go look up Drunk Girl. That's what the title of the song is called. Drunk Girl and it's a country song. So y'all go look it up. I forgot buddy name, man. Dang, it's not Cody Johnson. I don't know, I don't know buddy name. But anyways... The song is about how a man takes a woman home who's drunk and says it's the difference between a boy and a man. He'd be like, take a dr dr drunk girl home, then lock the door, something, 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 and something out of the floor. Like, he's basically saying you take a drunk girl home and you don't take advantage of her. He said that's, and that and it has a, a line in it that says that's the difference between a boy and a man. Now, you go to the hip hop side, we don't hear none of that. All we hear, we have songs, hey, lady, let's enjoy, indulge in illegal substances together. Hey, lady, let's go and get some shots of Belvedere. Hey, let's go get some GTV. Whoever, Birdman liquor, nobody never drunk that, by the way. Hey, let's go get some Henny. Hey, let's go turn up. All we know is very low vibrational stuff. We don't have nobody out there. We don't have one song out there right now on the radio. This is on the radio, y'all. I heard this on a country radio station. Because like I said, I've been branching out listening to other music. I've been listening to Diplo. I've been listening to reggaeton. I've been listening to rock. I've been listening to soft rock. I've been listening to the 50s music, the 60s music. You know, I've just been taking a break from hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? Because I really can't stand none of the new artists. Like, all of them are trash to me. They pretty much all sound the same. They all got the sound, same sound. And I look at most of these new artists as fake guys. Meaning, they never live none of the stuff they talk about. Most of these dudes be squares, and they be talking about getting women. And most of y'all, I can look at you and tell you you and you can't compete in the, in the work environment with getting women. You gonna get laughed at, bro. In the work environment, the club environment, oh, you are gonna get laughed at all day. Ninety percent of these new rappers. But anyways, back to the topic. Rick Ross had a song where he says, "I put a pill inside of a girl's drink, and I enjoyed that. Took her home, and I enjoyed that." That's not the and Rick Ross got shamed for that lyric. That's not the only lyric regarding. Taking advantage of a woman. There has been plenty of different rap lyrics where they said they took advantage of a woman. Plenty of times where dudes said, oh, we just go in the room and take this. All we call our women and all our songs is F that B. Okay? I listen to country for two days straight. I didn't hear the B word once. Two days straight. I listen to country for two days straight. I listen to no other music. I listen to album after album, playlist after playlist. I did not hear the B word once. So now, these young boys who are raised in these suburban Caucasian homes, daddy only listens to the country, maybe a little bit of rock and roll. And if you listen to rock and roll, they ain't calling women bees. They, and if you listen to any genre of music besides hip-hop, they're not talking about killing each other either or KILing each other at all. 
All right. So you listen to rock and roll. You don't hear one white man speak on KIL and another white man. Not in all cases. I'm pretty sure some diehard rock rock fans are going to say there are plenty of songs about chopping somebody up. But you, it's very rare you hear him say, I want to take on another Caucasoid or somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? It's really rare that we hear that. And I listen to country. I didn't hear not one song about violence. There's another song talking about if you can, all right? So if, if you can enjoy life until you can. You can do this until you can't. So you might as well do it while you, while you can. Basically, chase your dreams while you can because you're going to get old. They, 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 country music has life lessons in it. They, they be singing about some really good stuff in, in country music. Even with the blues. Like, there's so many different songs. And if you go back to the 60s and listen to how the music was, like you listen to Etta James or you listen to, um, you know, all any of the, the old time singers like your David Rubens. They were talking about loving women, being men, being men, making decisions. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Now we hear, F that B, she can leave. I have another one later. We just talk so so crazy in these songs. And guys, guess who's listening to it? Guess who absorbed this stuff the most? Black children. A little white boy in Wyoming listening to little baby. It's not going to resonate with him. It's entertainment. You know, he can't reflect to it. This is just, this is just eating some popcorn right now for him. He might like the song, but as soon as he takes it off, his reality hits where it's his life. He's not going to go. He knows that. So we are in a culture where we're hearing this music. We take the music off our headphones or we turn our radio off. We step out to reality and we live the reality that we're seeing. Everybody is in it. I think hip hop is something that keeps that vibration there for all of our people. It keeps us at this low, steady and not growing frequency. It keeps us there. You know, it keeps us at this. We're going to drink a turn up. You got to look at it. Whenever you go play spades or you have your get together, your gatherings, What's everybody doing? You know what I'm saying? Got some hip-hop music playing in the background. And they, there's a line to the song we all turn up to. Don't get it twisted. You go out to some white parties. They got their bonfire. They, they turn up the same ways. But guess what? Ain't nobody calling nobody no bees. I have partied with plenty of white people in the past. Party with, party with plenty of Spanish folk in the past. And guess what? Fights don't break out like that. It's rare. I've never went to one white party where a fight broke out. And it was really... The, the, and the dudes fought and ended up hugging afterwards. Like, they're like, yo, man, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. Like, they hugged. Every, most of the time I go to a black party, the cops is called, there is violence, people are getting shot. I have been to too many of them where people were getting killed and shot too many times. You know what I'm saying? Don't get it twisted. White people are drinking stuff too. I'm not trying to say that they're 100% innocent. I'm not saying that. But my, my main point for this video is that the music attacks our young minds. <laughs> now, if you're older, I can understand that. Listen to what you want when you're older. It's just on you. We, that's why... Well, if I was to make music, I would actually put lyrics. I would probably say one lyric in all my songs. Like, hey, kids, don't follow none of my lyrics. I'll start all my songs out like, that. hey, this is for adults. I'll make sure my first two bars is something like that. So, you know, this is my job. Like, you know how Fabulous says F-A-B-O-L-O-U-S in all his songs? I would do that with mine if I were to take music seriously one day, which I plan on doing it maybe one day. But another thing I want to say is, here's the thing. If you don't have good parenting, the music can really take effect on you. For an example, me. I didn't take heed to being a hood, young, black, you know, kid, the, the, the stereotypical black kid. I, when it, I was always in the house growing up. I played video games. I didn't like going outside. My mama would beat the brakes off of me. I was so terrified of my mama beating me, I avoided trouble. All right? I avoided trouble. So when I was a big fan of Jeezy, I was a big fan of 8 Ball MJG. 8 Ball MJG raps about... Uh, Pimping. <laughs> I don't know. That was the YouTube background. I'm sure you can say pimping. They don't they rap about that. Jeezy, when he came out in 04, he rapped about trapping, you know, getting the snow around. And that right there was very... I seen the Jeezy revolution and how detrimental it was. All the young boys who I went to school with. So we was in sixth grade and we was in fifth grade playing with marbles and hiding and go see. We was kids. We went to sixth grade. It immediately changed. I, and sixth grade was what, 2001? Jesus came out 2003, 2004. So it was eighth grade, seventh, eighth grade, I started seeing the change. But we wasn't we wasn't dealing with, with, with dealing around that time. Only a few kids was dealing. When we went to ninth grade and Jeezy dropped in 2005, 04, Jeezy had all my peers dealing, every last single one of them. And I seen the effect of it. I seen how everybody thought it was a trend and how everybody gets sucked into it and how hip hops will suck kids into this, into this ideology that you have to be something else, you know? And these little, these white boys going to school, learning about taking a drunk girl home and being a man, learning about 
taking taking their last chances. They're actually having fun. Their music makes you feel good. Even if you just listen to pop. I said pop. Pop. Ed Sheeran. I think I said his name right. He, I, ever heard, I listened to his old album. I, I don't think I've ever heard the man even curse once. You know what I'm saying? So our music is full of curse words. All right? Don't get it twisted. I love the curse. I love it. It's really hard for me right now doing this whole video without saying one. But I have got a lot of practice in. It's late. Um, our music is full of so is so overly sexualized. All we talk about is effing. If you listen to these other songs for these other genres, they don't even use the F word. It's making love. It's have a good time. It's a one night stand. They will use other words around it. Us is effing. They even got our women out here on the first night. Y'all, it was so crazy when I first got back into dating. Because a um, little history of me, I was in a, a five year relationship from um, 2013 to 2018. Five-year relationship. Yeah, I had my little hiccups, but I wasn't full-blown dating, okay? When I got back out to the dating world, I was so surprised on how easy it was to get in bed with a woman. It was really easy. There was no trying. There was When my day, well, I hate to say my day, but when I was growing up, you had to call a woman for a few weeks. You had to take on a few dates. Now it's, hey, I got some, some smoke. Come over. And they'll look at you like, and then now if you don't be like that, They'll play you. So it's so crazy how our women is. And fellas, women was not, you know, in, 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 digesting the um, male, um, what, what's the word can I use? Male uh, body fluids. Women are digesting male body fluids on the first night now. That This is facts. Digesting male body fluids on the first night now. Don't even know your first or middle name. I live this. This is scary. This is terrifying. Okay, that our women are like this now, and I blame the music. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. The, the females like that in the, in, in the white world, they do it as well, but it's crazy when our sisters is doing it now. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think it's like that. It's, it's bad. I don't get it twisted. Everybody does. But I'm just saying it's, it's broader. Women have been doing this on the first night stuff for as long as, but it just, it's way too easier now. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right? When I speak, I'm not speaking in all, I'm speaking in the majority, okay? So the hip-hop music is over-sexualizing everything. Have our young boys thinking that you have to smash every woman you come across, which I was in that brainwashing for the longest. You know, and I blame, I do blame a lot of hip-hop music. You know what I'm saying? Because you see the rapper with all the women. Like, when you watch these guys' videos and these other genres, the women ain't dressed like that all the time. There's a few here and there. But majority, they're not dressed like that. You know what I'm saying? So hip-hop music is very, very detrimental, man. Very detrimental. What do y'all think? Is hip-hop bad for society? Do we need to revamp it? Do we need to go back to the old days of uplifting the people? Where is one song, a hip-hop song, about uplifting anybody? The last one we had was Little Baby, and he tried to just... Clout chase with George Floyd. I got them chances, chances, chances. I, little baby, hey, when you rap, spit that spit out your mouth. Every time you got you, spit, spit that spit out. Rinse your mouth once and listen to ring or something. Anyways, but um, let me know what y'all think, man. Is hip hop bad? Do we need to do away with it? Do we need to get rid of it? But I'm about to break this phone. Do we need to get rid of it? Let me know what y'all think, man, because I personally think that it's really bad, especially from hearing a country song about a man taking a drunk girl home. And we don't have nothing like that <laughs> in, our, in any of our music at all. So, it's the Buddha McClain, the Buddha TV. Y'all like the channel, subscribe. I'm out. And I only got to do rag on because uh, I got my oil in my hair. And uh, I got to let my, my, my oil 